All right, everybody, welcome to today's video. And today's topic, I wanna go ahead and cover the topic of car collecting and the benefits and the detriments of doing just that. Whether you have a small car collection like myself with only six cars, or something as extravagant as Jay Leno with hundreds of cars, anything in between, I mean, there's definitely a lot of benefits and detriments that hold true regardless of the size of the collection. Some of these things that just have a bigger scale factor. So of course the biggest and most obvious uh, benefit to having a car collection is the variety of driving experiences you get. Now, of course, some people have collections of cars that are all very similar, and so it's more of an aesthetic at that point, but in cases of like myself, where all of my cars are very different, the driving experience is very different for each of the cars. I like the Challenger from one extreme is great for just cruising, going, having a good time, relaxing. Uh, it's not exactly the mountain carver because after all the suspension on it is 50 years old in design. And so while it does okay out on the uh, backcountry roads, it's not exactly designed for that. And then of course the other extreme with the Dodge Viper and it absolutely being designed for hitting up those mountain roads or doing track days. And so the driving experience between the two is very, very different. And that's why in my collection, I go and try and get something very different for each of the cars because of the limited resources I have. I don't have the funding available to me to be able to have multiple of the same type of vehicle. So I try and diversify and get as many different driving experiences as I can from different types of cars that all speak to me emotionally. So, of course, the one exception kind of is the CUDA that we recently acquired. Um, I mean, it is similar to the fact that it is an e-body platform Mopar muscle car like my Challenger is, but the end result of that car is gonna have a very different driving experience than I have in the Challenger because we're gonna update all the suspension and get it ready to go road racing. And so, of course, that is gonna be a very different experience than anything else that I've got in the uh, collection at the moment. Now, from here, the next thing that's really, uh, that is a really big benefit for me is meeting different types of people. Um, having all these different types of cars, you get invited into different types of events and different types of clubs, and so you meet a huge variety of people, and it's definitely held true over the years with all the different types of cars that I've owned. I'm going from with like my Challenger again, with the classic Mopar scene, as well as just the classic car scene in general, and then like the tuner scene with the SRT4 and then the modern muscle scene with my wife's charger, I mean, all these cars have resulted in me meeting a wide variety of different types of people and have definitely made some lifelong friends from each of the types of cars that I've owned over the years and being involved in different types of car communities. And it's just been an absolute blessing and I couldn't be more thankful for all the friends that I've met over the years through the different types of car clubs and car activities. Now, of course, another benefit, of course, is just being able to see all the different types of cars in one location. I mean, that's one of the big pluses. I mean, of course, I've thought about in the past selling either the, the Viper or the Neon. I'm just to free up extra capital, go and try a different type of car. But at the end of the day, I love looking at these cars and love having them in the garage and being able to see them and just enjoy them from an artistic perspective as well as the driving perspective. Because I mean, at the end of the day, whether you believe so or not, these are rolling sculptures and rolling works of art. And so the beauty of, have, of their appearance is just as important as the driving capabilities of these vehicles as well. I mean, it could be the most awesome performing vehicle in the world, but if it's absolutely hideous to look at, who's gonna want it? So having the variety of cars with the variety of appearances definitely has been really nice to have and is why I continue to buy of different types of cars every chance that I can. Now from here, of course, from a little more of a practical standpoint is uh, if you have one car break down, you have other cars to go ahead and use as backups. Uh, on there has actually even been, unfortunately, a time when I've had both my Honda and my Neon down and ended up driving the Viper back and forth to work. Luckily, I was able to resolve that fairly quickly, and so I didn't drive the Viper to work for more than, I think it was two weeks. Uh, but of course, for those of you who are new to the channel, haven't been here since the beginning, I have a 126 mile commute one way 
uh, to the office, so 250 miles a day of driving. Luckily, of course, the last year I haven't been doing that drive, um, but regardless, there was a two week period where I was having to drive the Viper back and forth to work while I was waiting for parts for the Neon, as I was gonna be down on the Honda for an even longer period of time. So having a variety of cars gives you that option to not only have backups in case of a car failure, but of course gives you the option to switch things up uh, from your day to day uh, for your driving. If you wanna get out of the monotony of driving one car for day in, day out, month after month, mix things up, take one of the other cars out, and it is a nice refreshing change. Now, of course, as many great things and reasons there are for building a car collection, there are some negatives as well. And of course, most of those revolve around uh, monetary reasons. So of course, the more cars you have, the more cars you have to maintain, the more expensive it gets to have for your regular maintenance as well as your insurance. And then on top of that, if you're like me and can't leave cars alone and need to modify them, Modifying more than one car gets really expensive in a hurry. I am every single one of my cars we've modified in one form or another. And of course, I've got a laundry list of things I want to do in each and every one of the cars that I currently have. And so that definitely adds to the expense and stretches the budget some. I'm perfect example is uh, wanting to do a brake upgrade on the Viper and it's probably gonna cost me about $6,000 to go with a StopTech brake kit. And that $6,000 could be spent on doing a full fuel system and turbo upgrade on my SRT4 as well as suspension upgrades on my Challenger. So there's definitely always trade-offs uh, and things like that. Of course, if you watched the last week's video on uh, tearing the Challenger apart and diagnosing my um, oil valve plug situation, I, if I were to go through and do a full build on that engine, I'm probably gonna end up spending somewhere between eight and $10,000 to do the build on that engine. I, and that eight and $10,000 definitely goes a long ways on other projects as well. So it's always a balance on which uh, cars are gonna get the priority on the funding. I, another perfect example, I am spending the money on building the engine for this Challenger could cover the cost of all the sheet metal work that I need to do on that 74 Plymouth Cuda project I have. And so, like most people, I've not made of money, and so I have to pick and choose which vehicles are gonna get worked on at which times for the upgrades and things like that. And so it tends to boil down to the day I'm actually gonna go ahead and pull the trigger, which car I decide I want to go ahead and spend that money on. Um, there doesn't always tend to be a rhyme or reason on which car gets worked on uh, when. It tends to just be whatever mood I'm in that day, I decide to go ahead and pull the trigger and drop some uh, money on a vehicle. And so of course, beyond there, another problem is storage issues. Uh, the more cars you have, the more places you're gonna need to store them. And as of right now, of course, I have this garage here, which uh, I went ahead and added one four post lift to get me a little extra room. I may need to add a second one to get me additional room for yet another car. And it, we'll see where things go in the future, but as your car collection grows, you need more space and getting more space, especially in different parts of the country or the world, can get really expensive in a hurry. And that is definitely another factor because the more money you spend on real estate and storing your vehicles, it takes away from being able to spend money on the vehicles. And so it becomes another cost benefit trade-off. Do you wanna grow the size of your collection or do you wanna spend more money on nicer cars? Um, it, is definitely a constant struggle and definitely first world problems. So those are really my thoughts on the pros and cons of having car collections. Uh, I definitely, of course, uh, have the pros outline the cons and so I just keep buying cars. Uh, hopefully we will go ahead in the future and continue to grow the collection and get more cars, uh, especially now that I have the YouTube channel and sharing all this with you. Another huge benefit of having a variety of cars and having more cars in my collection is it gives me that much more uh, content to provide all of you and let you experience uh, these types of vehicles through my eyes and through this platform. So I hope you found this information useful and entertaining as always. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Give me that thumbs up. It helps me out tremendously with that YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you wanna be kept up to date with all my future uploads, don't forget to smash that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell as well. And as always guys, I will see you the next video.